My name is Dr. Charlene Pizzullo, and I'm the Assistant Director for Community Programs at NYU Dentistry. I'm joined today by Ms. Jeanette Lamar, our Program Administrator, and a great group of our, our third-year dental students. They are going to be giving you a presentation today on oral health as we age and basically giving you a lot of tips, um, maybe some things you already know and re, you know, reiterating it, reaffirming it um, about what to do, um, how to take care of our mouth and the surrounding areas as we get older. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica. Um, you're not healthy without good oral health. So we all know that as we age, it becomes even more important to take good care of our teeth and our oral health as well as the rest of our body. So what is oral health? So oral health, it's basically the health of our mouth, including the teeth, the gums, the tongue, um, the throat, and the bones around the mouth. Um, your oral health can affect the rest of our body. So it's very important to remember that your oral health has a huge effect on your overall health. So let's talk a little bit about oral cavity. So basically the oral cavity, it's including the lips and whatever it's inside the lips. So the lips, cheeks, teeth, gums, the floor of the mouth, the roof of the mouth. So basically it starts with the lips and ends with the throat. And we can also say that the mouth, it's the entry point and it is important for several functions such as breathing, speaking and digesting food. So here is, that's the space where the food in the air, it's allowed to enter and that's why we wanna keep it healthy. So based on the research, there are some strong connections between the oral health and the overall health. So your oral health can contribute to various diseases and conditions, as well as some conditions also might affect your oral health. And some of the ones um, that we'll mention today are gonna be diabetes, heart disease, weight loss, dry mouth from medications, um, which increase the risk of cavities, osteoporosis, and many more. As a strong connection between oral and overall health, diabetes definitely contributes. Poor control of your blood sugar increases the risk of severe gum diseases. Gum disease also worsens blood sugar control. Controlling your blood sugar will help you reduce your gum disease. Dry mouth and nutrition is another strong connection between oral and overall health topics. Tooth loss, dentures, and decreased saliva can lead to alteration in diet. Habits such as sucking mints or consuming sweetened beverages to treat dry mouth may result in empty caries, which is an increased cavities risk. Along with there being a strong connection between oral and overall health, there are also some common oral health problems as we age. These include cavities, gum diseases, oral cancer, dry mouth, along with denture problems. It is important to note you are never too old to get cavities. The people in these images are of varying ages and all present with visual cavities. It can happen to anyone without proper oral hygiene practices. So with noting that, it is important to know what, note that anyone at any age can get cavities. And it's also important to understand why we get cavities. We get cavities when food such as bread, cereal, milk, soda, fruit, cake, or candy, or anything else you can really think of, stay on your teeth, bad bacteria, what we like to call, especially in pediatrics, sugar bugs, in your mouth changes them into acid. So what this all boils down to is bacteria plus acid plus food equals plaque, and plaque creates the hole that is the cavity. So now I'm going to talk about the gum diseases, which is also known as the periodontal diseases. As we all know that the infection which destroys the soft tissue and infections can destroy the soft tissue and bone and which can lead to the gum diseases, which in dental terminology we call the periodontal disease. So what we see when we have this disease, we see swollen, bright red or purple gums, we see tender gums, we see bleeding, which happens very easily while you brush, uh, we see gum recession. That means the soft tissue level just goes down and you can see the roots of your teeth. Uh, we see bad breath or bad taste. We'll talk about oral cancer now. So what can you see or how can you identify whether you have oral cancer? We see some color changes in the oral tissue, which might be red or white. We can experience difficulty in chewing, swallowing, speaking, or moving the jaw or the 
tongue. A persistent uh, sore of irritation uh, happens which won't heal during the time period. So warning signs of the oral cancer are pain, tenderness or numbness anywhere in the mouth or lips. A lump is seen with like a thickening rough spot, crust or small eroded areas. A change in how teeth fit the all teeth together. So the risk factors of oral cancer are 75% of oral cancers are attributed to tobacco and heavy alcohol use. Yeah, my name is Akinala Akinala. I'll be talking about uh, dry mouth today. So this is also known as xerostomia, and is a persistent feeling that there is not enough saliva in the mouth. So there are metrics for measuring xerostomia, and which is called salometric tests. So that's an objective test of determining if the mouth is really dry. And it can be caused by chemotherapy, that is when, patient, when people have cancers and they are taking chemotherapeutic drugs for the cancer. So those things, those medications destroy the salivary glands. Also radiation, that's when you are sending high frequency radiation to, to, to kill uh, cancer cells in the head and neck region. These uh, radiation cells, they destroy the salivary glands, invariably causing lower production or decreased production or no production at all of saliva. And there are some health conditions as well as some medications to the code predispose people to having xerostomia, which is dry mouth. So dry mouth is not a normal part of aging. That is because you are getting older doesn't mean you must come down with dry mouth. It's just because of these conditions we've talked about, which are chemotherapy, chemotherapy, radiation, health conditions and medications. So dry mouth can lead to the following, loss of teeth. So because um, the saliva has got its protective effect in the mouth. So when the, when the mouth is dry, it could predispose an individual to caries, which will cause loss of teeth. And we know that tasting chewing is aided by saliva because it wets the food and allows um, swallowing to take place easily. Also, you can't taste until the food is softened in, with saliva. So even speaking, when you are not well lubricated, you can't speak properly. So invariably, you predispose an individual to sore and uncomfortable tissue in the mouth. And because the, there's no saliva in the mouth, the whole place is dry, and it predisposed to individuals to uh, oral infections like candidiasis. So with aging, uh, commonly people have to get dentures. So there are di two different types of dentures. There are complete dentures and partial dentures. So complete dentures are when you are completely edentulous or you don't have any of your teeth on your top or your bottom. Um, and then partials are when you have some of your teeth remaining, but not all of them. So why should I consider dentures if you lost your natural teeth or if you need to replace miss missing natural teeth? The options, as I said before, are full or partial dentures. And it's important also to every few years, um, you have to keep in mind that you may have to redo your dentures. As you age, there is bone recession um, and the dentures may not fit as well as they first did when you first got them. So um, there might be a time of maybe seven or eight years you need to replace those dentures. So it's also really important to take great care of your dentures. It's really easy. So as you have to brush your teeth, your um, natural teeth every day, it's also really important to also brush your dentures. Uh, so there's a specific denture toothbrush that you can get to really get into the, uh, the grooves between the teeth. Also, it is important to never uh, sleep with your dentures and it's very important to take them out when you're sleeping and put them into water when you're not using them so that then it can help uh, break down some of those uh, natural deposits that get on them during the day. So it is never too late to start getting, uh, if you're old, it does not mean that you have to lose your teeth. Um, you can start at any age to take care of your teeth and gums. And as my colleague said, good oral health is related to good general health. Brushing your teeth is very important, but there are certain things that we need to know about the brush. The brush need the toothbrush needs to be uh, changed whenever it's worn out. 
and uh, we need uh, to select a soft bristle brush as it is more gentle to the gums. Uh, some suggest that you can use an electronic brush that helps you clean better and like it can really help you get the plaque and it's really efficient. So why do we brush our teeth? Make sure that you're not just brushing your teeth, uh, you're also brushing your tongue because most of the time when there's the bad breath, it usually comes from the uh, not brushing the tongue. And if you start brushing your tongue, you'll see results in instantly. Uh, we brush our teeth to prevent uh, tooth decay cavities. We brush our teeth to prevent the gum disease and to keep uh, our tooth uh, stains away and help eliminate a bad breath. As I said previously, that brushing your tongue can help eliminate the bad breath. So here are some tips of brushing your teeth. When brushing your teeth, you wanna make sure you're getting all the surfaces, not just your front teeth. This includes the outside, inside, back, and every surface of your teeth, especially your lower, lower bottom teeth. You wanna spend at least two to three minutes brushing your teeth. So setting a timer or using an electric toothbrush can definitely help. You wanna angle a toothbrush toward your gums. This will make sure we will disrupt the homes of the bacteria that gets built, built up throughout the day. We also wanna make sure we're using soft bristle toothbrushes and we wanna change them every single three months. Soft bristles are much more gentle on teeth and gums, which is why it is recommended. Now onto flossing. Flossing will allow poop particles, which is what bacteria love to remove from your teeth. Saliva is decreased during your sleep, causing bacteria to grow quickly, which is why it's so important to floss right, before, right when you wake up and right before you go to sleep because flossing before bed can help prevent this rapid growth. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the use of fluoride. So we saw that cavity is caused by three things, food, bacteria, and acid. We, can, we took care of the food by having good nutrition, non-sugary, non-sticky foods. Bacteria, we can take care of properly cleaning that my colleagues already mentioned. With fluoride, we can take care of the acid or we can make the tooth more resistant to the acid. So fluoride is definitely a good for our teeth and it is found in uh, so many community waters, now they have started adding to it and also fluoride mouthwashes. Other than that, we can see fluoride in many dental products like toothpaste, some dental floss also, and fluoride varnish. Varnish is applied over our teeth as a protective coating, which contains 5% of sodium fluoride and it prevents cavity by creating the environment of the tooth, which is more resistant to the acid. So the tooth structure is not getting dissolved by the acid presence. So why it is good, as I mentioned, it promotes the remineralization process and reduces the enamel demineralization. And it inhibits bacterial metabolism and acid production. And dentist determines whether the fluoride varnish will be applied or not. It depends on, on the total amount of the fluoride exposure we have, and it can help to prevent the tooth decay. So we want to wrap this up and obviously talk about how much diet and eating healthy food plays into our oral health, of course, right? And we know everyone's tired of hearing that they need to eat healthy and eat certain foods. And, you know, we're here to kind of tell you some of the same thing, but also about the fact that it's not just about what you eat, it's how often you eat it. So, um, right. So having a great, a good diet is important. You can have have the sugar and chocolate cakes and ice cream and all those things. But if you're going to eat it, you should eat it quickly and not let it stay in your mouth too long. Oh. Um, another interesting fact, other foods like cheese and fruits and vegetables, it helps to stimulate your saliva, um, which we've already talked about how important that is in protecting your teeth. So again, I'm not here to say don't have it, don't have the coffee, things like if you like milk or a little bit of sugar uh, in your coffee, that's okay, but just don't sip on it all day because that's constantly... Um, giving an environment for that bacteria to make acid like we talked about in your mouth. And you just want to kind of you know, eat the thing or drink the thing and be done with it and then brush um, just like we just, we said before. So we talked about important things that you should be doing, including healthy foods and brushing habits. But now let's talk a little bit about what we shouldn't be doing. Number one is we should definitely try not to stress out about things. When you're stressed, you end up grinding your teeth at night, sometimes even during the day. And what happens when you grind is not only do you end up wearing down your tooth, 
and getting tooth pain, but you can also get neck pain, headaches, jaw pain, your teeth become increasingly more sensitive. And also they start to wear down and you'll see them flattening out a little bit. Grinding or clenching your teeth is called bruxism. And this can happen while you sleep without you even realizing it. So if you think you have these symptoms, which are symptoms that Emily has talked about, the jaw pain, teeth flattening out, headaches, you want to talk to your dentist to see if you need a night guard. And that is basically a protective device that goes over your teeth and your gums to help you not grind your teeth at night. Another thing that's also really bad for your teeth are drugs. And as you can see in the photo, this is phenomenon known as meth mouth. So basically drugs can cause erosion of the gums of the teeth and dry mouth, grinding teeth, ulcers in mouth, cracked teeth, loss of teeth, pain in the mouth, and really, really, really bad breath. Okay, so the last thing we can talk about is the effects of cigarettes. Obviously, cigarettes are bad for you. It's also bad for your mouth. Um, it could leave staining. It could lead to gum disease. It could lead to really bad smell because of the dry mouth that it causes. And your teeth root can also start showing. The major takeaways that we think you should take home is using a soft bristle brush. It normally comes on the packet where it's written soft on it if you're not aware about it. Uh, take about two to three minutes to brush your teeth. Each time that you're brushing, just try to set up a timer on your phone. That's really helpful for me. Uh, or try to like watch a video for about two minutes, which might be helpful. Floss every day. Like even if you are missing some teeth, floss. It's tedious, but floss. Uh, try to eat healthy food, vegetables, and of course, eat snacks. Eat sugar food as doctor recommended, but try to limit it as much as you can. And don't let it stay too long in your mouth. Don't try to sip on your coffees for like all day if they are sugared. Uh, make sure that no food debris is left behind. Try to rinse your mouth, mouth uh, rinse, uh, brush your teeth as much as you can. Avoid cigarettes and drugs and stress and do listen to your dentist. We are always here to help you keep your smiles healthy. Anything can really stain your teeth. So you really want to worry about what it's doing to your overall health as well. Red wine and pigmented foods and things like that can stain your teeth. So, you know, there's a lot of whitening toothpaste out there. If you're really concerned about the color, just be mindful about uh, causing sensitivity. If you do have sensitive teeth, um, Sensodyne, the brand, they have a whitening toothpaste as well. So that might be a better option for you, but um, you just want to be careful about buying like any random uh bleaching products that are sold on the market because sometimes they might be too strong if you have sensitive teeth. It's just like a general idea. If you're like always bleeding, like if you're eating and bleeding or brushing your teeth and you show signs of bleeding, um, it's normal to see bleeding if you're like brushing and then like flossing in between your teeth. You just want to make sure you're not brushing too hard. Or if you're like flossing too hard, you just don't want to traumatize the gums and, and the teeth. But if you're constantly seeing bleeding and after about like a week of good oral hygiene, like you're brushing for about two to three minutes a day and flossing like twice a day, like in the morning and at night, it's good to go see your dentist just to see if there's anything else going on because typically good oral hygiene, if you're just starting, um, the bleeding's normal. And then as you progress, you just wanna maybe go to your uh, dentist and ask them or like get a checkup to see if there's any other things that could be causing your bleeding. but. Um, because of the blood thinners, we could see like um, the bleeding could it just could be normal, but I would go see your dentist if it hasn't like gone a little bit better with just good oral hygiene. If you're, if you're flossing regularly and the bleeding is not improving as it should, because usually flossing normally and, and brushing will, will help that because it's usually gingivitis, which is like we spoke about inflammation of the gums because of a buildup of bacteria. So if that hasn't improved after doing everything Anthony spoke about, then yes, there could be some result from your blood thinners, but it's best to always get it checked out just to make sure nothing else further is happening. Closure to e-cigarettes. It creates the aerosols, which can lead to more bacteria in your mouth, which is associate, associated again back to the cavities and gum disease. And it can also cause dry mouth and your gums can be inflamed. So it can lead to bleeding again. And other soft tissue issues can also be formed with use of e-cigarettes. And one more thing that some flavoring capsules in e-cigarettes can also lead to cavities, which increases the risk of 
uh, let's say even lung disease or even soft tissue carcinomas. So, you know, it's hard depending on the age of the child, right? To get them motivated to floss is, is certainly, I mean, it's hard to get kids to brush, um, let alone floss, but we do want to try. Um, in general with floss, we like the brand. Uh, we're not supposed to be, you know, like doing any type of brand endorsement here, but I will tell you personally that I like the brand Glide just because their their floss is flat. It's like, it's a waxier, it's easier to get in and out. It's harder to traumatize your gums like Anthony spoke about. Um, so I do like that brand. But if you have a very small child, it's going to be hard for them to manipulate floss at all. So you're probably going to have to help them as or whoever the adult is helping them. Um, you can try the flossers with the handle, but just something to be mindful mindful is um, that you should use more than one or wipe it in between because if you don't, you're just kind of passing debris uh, and food in between the teeth and it's not really doing anything. You're just kind of moving it from space to space. But um, I would try to make it like a fun activity. I know for my son um, with brushing anyway, I always have like a song in the background. He has a favorite show. Um, and I always just try to like put that on so he gets you know excited about it as, as opposed to making it like a daunting task. I always like sing the song and he knows it's time. He's only, he's not even two years old. And he runs up to go brush his teeth. So I think like trying to make it exciting for kids is kind of like the way to do it. I don't know specific brands because there might be ones out there already for, um, for children who have sensory issues or any children that might fall on the spectrum or things like that. But what I would say is that um, I would probably go for the smallest toothbrush toothbrush possible right because it's the least intrusive so I think that that would be a good place to start and the head of it is like much smaller than like your average toothbrush and I think that um that might help with depending on the sensory issues it, it might help with like you know that feeling of being overwhelmed or like that it could cause gagging or that it's going to cause an issue so I would say start small and then work yourself as you know larger brush as the as the child can handle it, it's really dependent on your situation. So the the metal based ones are kind of the tried and true way of making partial dentures if you're only missing some of your teeth. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of hesitant with the idea of putting metal in their mouth. I promise you the metal that we use for it is not toxic. It's actually very durable. Um, it's usually a little bit stronger than the ones that are made out of the pink acrylic. Um, you know, we've seen it before where somebody steps on that sometimes or some, you know, whatever happens and that can break a little bit more easily than, um, the metal ones do. And additionally with the metal ones, it's a little bit easier to, um, if you lose a tooth in the meantime, we can add a tooth a little bit easier to, um, the metal framework as opposed to the pink acrylic one. The great pros of the acrylic one are sometimes they're a little bit more flexible depending on the kind that you get. They maybe like feel a little bit more natural. Um, but overall research shows that the metal ones um, kind of put the least amount of force on your teeth. Um, but if you have bone loss and issues like that, you might you might not have that as an option. You might need to um, try using the um, the acrylic ones because the way that they're situated in your mouth, they won't. Um, they can be designed to not kind of like contribute to that bone loss any further. So it, it kind of just depends on who you are, how your teeth are, what your bone is like, but um, your dentist can definitely help you make that decision, but there's really no right or wrong answer. And there, especially, you know, I think the metal one gets a bad rap and it, there's really nothing wrong with them. Dental implants themselves do not increase your risk of infection. Um, they're actually you know, if I was missing a tooth or um, if I was recommending to a loved one and they were, you know, they had good systemic health, I would recommend an implant because it's kind of like the next best thing to having your own tooth. Um, but if you are immunocompromised, if you are a heavy smoker, um, if you have other things going on, um, you're getting like treatment that would otherwise cause you to be immunocompromised. Um, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, things like that, that could lead you to poor healing um, and a failure of an implant. Overall, you're in good health. If you have relatively good levels of bone and you're missing a tooth, um, I think it's a great option.